Lord, we want you to do whatever we ask of you. James and John have their eyes on a lofty prize to sit at Christ's right and left in his kingdom. To share in Christ's glory is a good desire, to be sure. James and John didn't come to this desire right away. Christ drew them more and more into his plan from the very beginning when they left their fishing nets to follow him. They came to know him and know his love. So at this time, they trusted in his word that he is the Messiah and the Son of God. And so they ask him if, they will, if he will grant them whatever they ask of him. Grant that in your glory we may sit one at your right and the other at your left. And Jesus in turn asks them if they will drink the cup that he is to drink or be baptized with the baptism with which he is baptized. He is speaking of the cup of his suffering and the baptism of his own purifying and redeeming sacrifice. He is asking them if they will lay down their life for the very kingdom they wish to enter. And they say, we are. Yet they still don't know what that means. Neither John, who will stand faithfully at the foot of the cross to watch Jesus die, nor James, who will be the first martyr among the apostles. They approached the Lord with this request for worldly glory. And they leave, having committed themselves to share in his suffering. But Jesus is purifying uh, their desire. He's showing them what it means to belong to him. They don't get what they expect. Indeed, they get much more. They're glorified with Christ beyond anything they could imagine or anything we can imagine now. They share the glory of Christ, who St. Paul says is the great high priest who passed through the heavens to mount his throne of grace. Now we too make requests of the Lord for help and for healing. The lesson of James and John is not that our requests have to be perfect or that our desires even have to be pure in making the request. The lesson of James and John is that we have to be ready for the answer. We have to be ready for whatever the Lord may grant to help us and to spur us along on our path to heaven. God may not grant that we are delivered from trials or suffering right away, Think of all the challenges that we're facing in this country now, our stumbling economy, the shameful assault on our religious freedom, the decades-long holocaust against the unborn. It's not like we can just pray and pray and pray and then all of these things will resolve themselves. Not at all. We as Christians have to be part of the solution. And as we make this request from God that we have to be ready for the answer, follow me. Go out into the world and proclaim the good news. We have to be part of the solution, part of a more just and prosperous country. We have to be faithful citizens of this great nation and do our part to make it great again. But we have to be very careful in the midst of all the confusion and invective that is out there in the world. We have to be careful about what we're asking of God, especially in this tense time of the state and national elections. The one request that so many Christians and so many Catholics and even some Catholics in public office are asking of the Lord is not, Lord, we want you to do whatever for us we ask of you, but rather, Lord, we want you to be whoever we ask you to be. Lord, Be the God who gave us your commandments through Moses and let us pick and choose the commandments that we may follow. And God replies, no. Lord, be the God who willed to make man and woman in your image and likeness and willed that a man should leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, but let us redefine marriage. No. Lord, be the God who sent your son to die for us Jesus, who shows us the truest form of freedom, the highest and best choice, was loving us to the end and giving up your life for us that we may live eternally, but make it okay for us to take the lives of the most innocent and helpless among us. No. Jesus, be the God who said, let the children come unto me, but do not judge us as a nation for turning our back on those who need our protection the most. Lord, we want you to be whoever we ask you to be. And God says, no, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. 
I am not the God of the dead and those who embrace death. I am the God of the living and the living God. God will not be whoever we ask him to be. God is not a puppet, and Christianity is not a menu. It is living Christ as Christ teaches us in and through the church. We can't just decide what we want to be true about him or his commandments. We can't follow some and not others. James and John wanted to sit at Christ's right and left in his glory. And that was not for Jesus to decide. He was for whom those places were prepared. And who was at Christ's right and left when he reigned from the altar of the cross as the great high priest and victim? Two thieves, one who mocked him and the other who repented of his sins and was forgiven. Those who order off the menu, as it were, of Christianity are mocking Christ with that wicked thief. And no wonder, with so many who say they accept some of Christ's teachings and not others, do we find our nation in such darkness and sin. And who can we look to save us then? Only God. And God as he is, the living God who is with us, the living God who will help us and bring us the light of his grace. And so we pray, Lord, we want you to do whatever we ask of you, Lord, save us. Help those who don't have jobs. Lord, restore our freedom as Christians. Lord, save the unborn. Lord, help us to make this country free and just and prosperous. And we should pray. We should ask that of the Lord. We should pray without ceasing. But the time has come for us to act as well. The election is just a few weeks away. And we have a duty to vote. It is our duty to our fellow citizens and to God. We can't vote while asking God to be whoever we want him to be. We have to vote according to our conscience formed by his teachings, not formed by the world who wants nothing at all to do with him. And we may know other Christians and Catholics who need our witness. We've got to be able to tell them, God is the God of life, the God who is. We can't follow some commandments or principles, no matter how noble, and ignore the right to life and religious liberty. We can't order off the menu of Christianity. We have to be faithful witnesses to who Christ is. James and John shared in Christ's glory, but they learned from him who was the servant of all that they must suffer as he did for the sake of that glory. And we too, will suffer with this injustice that our society has wrought for a while longer. Don't think in any way that our work will be done after the election. Certainly we'll continue to suffer the mockery and scorn of some that is and always has been the, cor- the cost of discipleship. But we as Catholics are the hope of our country. We have the truth of Christ and are, we are called to be heralds of the gospel to bring the whole world to his light, to bring everyone to his truth and to his love. We are called to be part of the solution to our country's problems, part of the healing that our nation needs. Here in the church we stand when the gospel is proclaimed. We stand when we pray the Our Father and we stand to receive the Lord in Holy Communion. Too long have we stood in this church for the Lord and not stood for him and with him out in the world. Now, We have to stand in the world for our God, in the light of his glory. Let's stand for the God of justice and mercy, the God of peace. Let's stand for the God of the living and of his Son, the Lord of life. 